Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a study in texture. What's the difference between texturizing with a scissor versus texturizing with a razor? Let's get started. I've already gone through and cut everything one length. So that's going to give me the simplest shape that I can really see the texturizing pop and the variations between the two. So I'm going to go through and deep point cut with the scissor the entire right side of the head and use some thinning scissors to thin it out where I feel like it's too heavy. And then on the right side of the head, I'm going to use my feather plie and go through and channel some texture into it. And that will also remove weight where I feel that I need to and create separation. So we're going to start right here on the right side of our section of the nape, which is the occipital to the mastoid. I'm going to use my Jatai Kilto scissors. This is the sharpest scissor that I have, and so it's gonna be easy for me to apply a deep point cut without having to fight it. I'm gonna comb everything straight down, and about halfway through, I'm gonna comb this right against my fingers to kind of flatten that section out and get it real straight, and then I'm gonna go through and just point cut real deep. I'm not keeping the scissor completely 100% parallel with the hair. I want to go through and cut it at an angle so I can create some separation and some pieciness to it. Now whenever I go through and do a deep point cut like this, I'm basically only adding texture to the bottom two or three inches of the section. Now from here I'll continue on taking parallel sections as I go up the head. And one thing that I want to be mindful of is to not pick up my previously cut sections. I don't want to go through and overly texturize hair that I've already gone through and cut and texturize. Give us a thumbs up, click subscribe, and the notification bell to be notified of future Jatai Academy content. I don't want to take too thin a section. If I take too thin of a section, I won't be able to see how much that I'm actually taking out. So I want a thick enough section that I can actually see my channel point cutting going through. Each section I will cut, I will cut independently of any other section so I have no guide each section is cut strictly by feel. If I need to, I'll ribbon that section together, go through, cut that up and in. And I'm going to continue my sections until I run out of hair. Now we're coming to the last section. Now for areas that I feel like are too thick, I I can change up my approach by either going through resectioning, standing up and going through and cutting through, but it's not very easy to control when I do that. On the bottom, it, you don't have to have that much control, but when you're working internally, you need more control. So in that case, where I need more control, over how much hair I'm thinning, I'm gonna use my Jatai Tokyo thinning scissors. This way I can control exactly how much I take and exactly where I'm taking it from. And I can choose if I want the texture blade on top of the section or on the bottom. If I go through and use the cutting blade on top, it'll be a little bit more seamless. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through, take a vertical section, point cut about halfway through. Where it gets longer, I may hit it twice. 
That way I can thin without leaving any kind of scissor marks at all. And I can also be much more in control of where I take my hair from and how much I take. Like right here, there's less hair. Here there's a little bit more, so I take a little bit more. This section, there's very little through here, but just a little bit underneath, so I'll take there. And I'm gonna go through and do this to all the sections. I will take a larger section, and since I'm taking it vertical, it'll be easier for me to control than if I take a real fine, small horizontal section. Pull that straight out, a little bit there, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Where it's thicker, I'll take more, I'll hit it more times. Where it's not as thick, I won't take as much. On the top, I don't want to run the risk of any kind of alfalfa sprig sticking up, so I will never texturize more than about halfway through the section. If I start texturizing up here close, I run the risk of that sticking up. Now that's texturized for thinning to even out the thickness and point cutting on the bottom. So now let's go to the razor side. On the razor side, I'm gonna go through and use a little bit of tie blade glide to help my razor slide through the hair more effortlessly. So now I'm gonna use my feather plie razor, which is a guardless razor, and I'm gonna go through, comb this section straight down just like I did on the other side, but instead of point cutting up, I'm gonna razor cut and channel some of this out. And take out as much hair as I feel that I need to. Now with this method, I will actually thin and separate at the same time. Where the other side with the scissor, I had to go through and do both independently. I will not channel more than about halfway through the length of the section. I could probably get away with it more underneath than I can on top, which sometimes I will actually go through and thin it deeper if I feel that the hair is so overly thick and really, really stiff. Now I'm gonna continue taking parallel sections as I run up the side of the head. Start in the center of the back and then work towards the front. Close the blade each time so I don't end up cutting any hair or cutting myself. Get that out of the way. Now as I'm going through and channel cutting this, I want you to notice that I'm starting with the tip and then I will go in and that way I use the entire length of the blade, not just the tip of the blade. I don't thin this very, very front piece here. I'll thin the hair just behind it. Now I'm just gonna continue on and do the same thing until I run out of hair, being mindful to not pick up hair underneath as I texturize each subsequent section. Follow us on your favorite social media at Jatai Feather. Now let's see if we can tell a difference while it's wet. Oh yes, the scissor side is gonna be a little bit, well actually it's a lot more solid than the razor side and it's heavier, it doesn't have the same amount of movement to it that the razor side has. But let's blow it dry, take a look at it, see how we're doing. We've got uh, our lovely model blown dry, and now let's compare the differences between the side done with the uh, scissor and a thinning scissor versus the side done with the razor where you channel cut it and control the weight at the same time. Now, on the right side, I, you can certainly tell when I run my fingers through it, it still has this nice solid shape and the texturizing is, is a very soft, diffused kind of separation. I still have a good, solid, strong shape 
It creates a lot of movement to it, but it still has that solid one length shape and it just bevels my one length shape. So sometimes a one length bob can look very, very blunt and broom like. So by going through and doing it this way, I certainly bevel that, but at the same time, I keep it really straight and most of the movement and texturizing is in the bottom two inches of the hair. Even though I went through and texturized internally, it was more of an even diffuse thinning where I get the separation underneath. Now, if I look at my razor side, you can certainly tell when I run my fingers through this, I've got a lot more separation of texture from the center all the way down through the ends, and it forces it to separate into pieces much more prevalently than the other side. So when would I use one over the other? Say for instance that I have somebody with very, very thick but fine textured hair, I'm definitely using the razor. If I have someone with thinner hair that I want to maintain a solid shape and I just want to soften the edges, then I'll use a scissor for. If I have hair that has a fuzziness in the texture, I'll definitely use a scissor and a thinning scissor for it because I can get my thinning in control without any fear of it exploding the cuticle. Please check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there to make you a better hairstylist and barber. Also, let us know what you'd like to see in the future. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And we'll see you next time.